Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne, and in today's video, we're gonna just do a little bird. We're just gonna do this little chickadee, and I will take you from start, step by step, from start to finish, and it just took me, this is all a la prima, it took me about uh, maybe three hours to do the little piece, and it's my first piece <laughs> coming off of the workshop, so sometimes I have to decompress a little bit after a workshop, so this is my first piece back, and I wanted to loosen up and just have fun, and so I hope you can loosen up and have fun and follow along, and uh, yeah, and paint this little chickadee with me, and if you are my subscribers, thank you so much, and if you are my members, thank you very much too. I wanna give a shout out to uh, Joy Lynn, and Allison, so thank you so much for being there for me. And I wanna also thank all my Patreon folks that are also uh, supporting me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this little chickadee. The palette that we're gonna do, uh, use for our little uh, chickadee painting is as follows. I have ivory black, this is Van Dyke brown, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, this is, um, Raw Sienna, but it happens to be Michael Harnings. It's probably the one of the few my um, Raw Siennas that I actually like, and because I like this color. You'll see Raw Siennas are oftentimes, they're not that neutral. Um, this is yellow, uh, French yellow ochre, Michael Harding. Titanium white, Windsor Newton. Michael Harding's um, King's Blue. This is a Snaye natural or neutral tint. Then I have um, a thalo green Michael Harding, sap green Windsor Newton. And that is what we're gonna start with as far as our paints. Our substrate is going to be a six by six gessoed canvas, stretched canvas. Our brushes today, I've got a little number two, Roseberry Sable series 99. I don't have my glasses on. Um, this is a number four pointed Shiraz this is a number two ivory pointed round and then i have a number five rosemary long filbert series 278. so we're just gonna <laughs> this is actually a piece for me to loosen my head up after the last workshop and i just need to this is my first piece since the workshop so i just want to keep it loose and fun so let's see where it goes i'm starting out just by putting a little bit of uh, gamsol down onto my substrate. This again happens to be a six by six stretched canvas. It's a, a deep edge canvas. So I'll be painting on all the sides. And I'm just kind of putting a little bit of this paint thinner down because I'm gonna do a wipe out. I'm gonna get my shape of my little chickadee. And I'm gonna have my background be a dark, kind of a, I want it to look foresty. So I'm using a little bit of the thalo green, grabbing a little bit of the Van Dyke brown.
Again, this is actually a com this black is a combination of burnt sienna, I mean, I'm sorry, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I just kind of wanted a more See, and it's a little bit cooler up here, so I'm putting a little bit more blue into it. Now, his eye is right, right around here. We're not really gonna make this too. I'll figure some of this stuff out as I move through it. Up and then out. So I'm gonna kind of work on the background a little bit for just a minute, and I don't wanna bore you with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, time lapse. So I'm going to work, since we've kind of got this kind of rough background in, um, I'm going to start working really from the top, from this direction and start working my way down through the piece. And I kind of have this just, you know, there's a lot more refinement that has to happen here. Um, so I'm actually taking a smaller brush. I'm taking a number two Rosemary um, uh, Series uh, 99. And I'm gonna start kind of putting in some of the features the bird has. So I'm taking a little, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on my piece here, my photo reference. I'm taking a, a little bit of King's Blue and adding some burnt umber to it. I'm making just kind of a gray right here. I grabbed a little cad red, and this happens to be the um, Blue Ridge oils or the Blue Ridge color from Asheville, North Carolina. So Eric Silver, if you're listening, dig in your paints. 
So I'm actually making a very dark, dark, dark brown. But the cad is always a, and I'm, I'm mixing it with ivory black. So I have the opacity of the, um, the cadmium when I put this eye in. So I'm gonna suggest it's right here. So I'm making it very dark brown. And it's a very round little eye. It's hard to see, I know you can't see anything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of the King's Blue Gray that I made. And since I can't rub, put, put my finger on this, I'm going to suggest that there's a little eye rim right around this edge. And it's better to not load your brush a lot and just keep poking at it until you get it. Very, very, very faint. Okay. I sort of have this eye in there, but now I'm gonna take a little bit of this black and cut in around this eye. And I'm taking the ivory black this time. This kind of comes, I have it a little bit too. And I'm being very ginger, you know, I'm, I'm hardly touching these things here. And this is too much on the top. There we go, that looks better. Cutting in around the eye area. Now there's a really bright shine in this eye, okay? There's actually two little shines. I'm gonna take my paint scraper, suggest that it's right here. I'm gonna take, hmm. Since I have all this reflective greens in here, I don't want this, because I want this eye color to be more, um, the shine to be a little bit more, a little bit more green that would be flashing around in this area, since that's the color I went with for my background. So remember, light is reflective. So even if my reference doesn't show it, um, it would make sense that the shine, because all the, all the uh, light around it is green, there's all this green because he's in a, a thicket. I'm just putting a light green. And I used, uh, just actually used a little bit of the uh, phthalo green and a little bit of titanium white. Now I, I kind of want to enhance a little bit of, and this, this brush, believe it or not, is probably not small enough. So I'm gonna go in with an even smaller brush this is a two zero. This is a little tiny red dot. This is one that you get when you, on the Rosemary um, Workbench miniature set. That's a really, it, that was a really good deal. Um, I definitely, if you need some little brushes, if you're a miniature painter, see I am not a miniature painter, but this is a, this is technically kind of a miniature piece. It's a six, is this a six by six or eight by eight? Anyway, it's little, it's a little painting. And I'm just kind of hitting in there. I'm putting a little bit more of that brown in here that I made with the CAD and black. And now I'm going in straight black to create a pupil. It's very, very subtle. I mean, you, you almost have to be right up on this piece to appreciate what I'm doing here. I've got to make my little shine area bigger. And I'm cleaning this brush off. Now, when you load, load it on the tip. As you can see, it's loaded right on the tip. And I'm going to extend this out a little bit. There we go. 
Um, and I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of white because it's just not quite light enough. And I have to really hold my arm to steady it. There we go. And there's a little tiny shine right there. Oops, didn't get it, let's try it again. It's not wanting to go in. <laughs> Come on, see, see, I can use that little tip. Ah, dang it. There we go. Sometimes it's really hard to deposit that little. So I'm going to go back underneath. There. Trying to get the eyes is always, because there, there's not a lot of room for error. There we go, I don't need that little bit of white there. See, the thing is, if you go too thick, you get a weird glare. I'm gonna leave it alone, I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay, so I just not need to knock down that impasto there. I'm going back in, I keep saying I'm gonna leave it alone, but I can't. All right, now I'm gonna leave it alone for a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna move on through the, into the cheek patch here in a minute. I'm gonna to switch to a larger brush. Um, I'm gonna go back in with um, the number two pointed round rosemary. Um, I'm going in a little bit lighter. I gotta go a lot lighter actually. It's, um, there we go. Because I have this other color down, it's allowing me to do what I need to do. Actually, you know what, I'm doing this, but I may switch to the smaller one. The smaller one, this will actually do the, uh, do the job. I can get a lot of the um, paint down, but I think I wanna do the detail. So I'm gonna use, I may, flop around. I'm going to try the number two. This is the series 99. Because there's lots of little, every now and then you pick up a little piece of hair. down through this part of his throat area. And I guess if I'm working from this side over, I could go ahead and do this little leg. Now, I'm gonna go in, I might as well, with the King's Blue and white, and kind of, goodness gracious, sorry about that. I wanna actually use a little bit of the purple that we made earlier with the magenta. It's magenta and, um, ultramarine blue, adding a little bit of titanium white, rolling my edges. 
Now this is, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be tricky. And I went to one side, going to the other side. That's not to say I'm not gonna go a lot lighter, but I just wanted to do that. I'll just do this whole thing like this. And uh, remember that nifty little color I made earlier, the, the um, ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber. That's what I'm putting down on the center of this leg. But I can go a little bit more ultramarine blue. I kind of went reverse of what I usually do, but it's okay. Sometimes it's good to shake it up a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take straight on black, go between the toes here. See? Always breaking the rules here. And I will put a branch in there, but I'm not really ready to do that yet.
and here's our little tiny chickadee. Now, there's a lot of, um, I have a lot of cool blacks on the top of this bird's head, and you can see there's those little purple highlights. And because I went with a very dark background, I wanted them to be kind of backlit, just a tiny bit. So you can see that I was able to soften the edges in the tail so it's a little blurry. I even blurred some of the little edges right in through here. And I just think it adds a softness to the bird. I just suggested the stick. I, you know, um, it's not that, it's not that, um, I just, I, I just wanted to make this an easy piece. I was coming off of the workshop. This is the first piece. And you know, it was done in just a few hours. So not, not bad for the first day back from painting. Um, obviously you can see the palette. Um, I still kept it pretty simple based, you know, the colors that we started with. I did end up adding a little cad, red, light, and a little bit of um, magenta and a little bit of the um, Indian yellow, but that was, we started with the same palette, you know, the, that palette and we just added a few colors and voila, we are finished. And here is our little chickadee. Dee dee dee. So, you know, I haven't painted the side yet and I'll get to it, but this was just really a fun little piece for me to loosen back up and get used to, you know, getting back into the groove of painting. And we will be doing another workshop coming up soon. And the next workshop will be on October 7th, 8th, and 9th. And it will be birds and botanicals. And we're gonna have a good time with that. I'm already, uh, I already have a, somebody signed up for it. So I'm hoping I'll get some more folks signed up for it. And I hope you can join us too. And of course, that will also be live streaming it, but um, it's so much better in person. So come join me for that workshop. And if you aren't, a subscriber please go ahead and subscribe and also consider my membership i'm having so much fun with that i have gotten to know joy lynn and just allison just jumped on so you know this is new to me and i'm, I'm working working it out and, and enjoying the process so i hope you go ahead and jump on in that too and uh yeah so from kingsport tennessee i want to say thank you for joining me and i'll see you next time bye